Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today I'm going to give you all a two-part update on ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19 in the outpatient setting. When I look at all the information that's been shared on the internet, through large media outlets, and on the website, FLCCC, it's so overwhelming. There are two vastly different opinions about the effectiveness of ivermectin. Well, what's the truth? Does ivermectin work to treat COVID-19 in the outpatient setting or not? I will present the data in an unbiased way and let you all decide. I want to say that I work for no organization that would benefit from anything that I say here. I'm simply an internal medicine physician that works for a large hospital organization in an outpatient clinic. And I'm going to focus on the early treatment of COVID-19 in the outpatient setting. This first segment is going to focus on the recent results of the TOGETHER trial. This trial overall has recruited more than 10,000 patients to see if any currently used medications prevent hospitalizations for patients with COVID-19. Some of the other medications they've evaluated have included hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, ritonavir, metformin, doxazosin, interferon lambda, and fluvoxamine. If this trial sounds familiar, it's because this trial showed a benefit from using the low-cost SSRI fluvoxamine in reducing COVID hospitalizations by 30%. I did a prior video on fluvoxamine and will provide the link for that in the description. These results were published in the New England Journal of Medicine on March 30, 2022, and it was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial with symptomatic adults with a positive COVID-19 test from 12 public health centers in Brazil. One of the criticisms I've heard about this trial was that ivermectin has been widely used in Brazil to prevent and treat COVID, so it would be difficult to find people that were not currently taking ivermectin or had not used it at some point. The authors of the paper addressed this concern and stated, quote, we ensured that trial participants did not have a history of ivermectin use for the treatment of COVID-19 by means of extensive screening, end quote. And I can only assume this means they also pulled anyone out that was using ivermectin to prevent COVID-19 as well. Adults admitted to the trial had at least one high risk medical issue that increased their risk for severe COVID-19, such as diabetes or a BMI greater than 30. And patients could be symptomatic for up to seven days. They received a dose of ivermectin based on their weight, which was 400 micrograms per kilogram for three days, which is equivalent to the FLCCC's recommendation of 0.4 milligrams per kilogram. My biggest complaint about this part of the study is that they let patients be symptomatic for up to seven days because we know that antiviral treatments are so important to start early. For example, when you have influenza, I don't really even consider giving an antiviral like Tamiflu if it's been more than 48 hours since symptoms started because the benefit really isn't worth it. So I looked at the data more closely and it appears they did break apart the two groups into those that started the medication within three days of symptoms and those that started four to seven days after symptoms. I was so glad they did that because it appears that there really isn't a difference between the two groups. But one thing I was really disappointed to see was that 23% of the participants were not placed in a category at all. So we don't know how many days after their symptoms they started the medication. 317 patients out of the 1,358 studied, we aren't sure how long after their symptoms started were they put on the medication. This is a huge hole in the data in my opinion. I wish they had at least shown a category as quote unknown time from onset of symptoms so as to not just leave them out completely. And of course, I wish they had gone ahead and treated patients for five days instead of the three days, especially if some of these patients had already had symptoms for seven days. The data showed that overall 100 patients or 14.7% in the ivermectin group went to the hospital because their symptoms worsened versus 111 or 16.3% in the placebo group. Even though the reduced number of hospitalizations appears to be less in the ivermectin group, the results were not statistically significant. Ugh, this is so disappointing. This really was a well-run trial, except for the misstep I mentioned above, but I am thankful they at least released this data so I could look at all of the numbers myself. 
And one interesting side note is that the principal trial, which is a large ongoing trial through the University of Oxford that's currently studying ivermectin for outpatient treatment of COVID-19, they are allowing patients to enroll up to 14 days after having symptoms. I'll look forward to those results around August 2022. In the end, this is definitely a blow to using ivermectin in the outpatient setting to prevent hospitalizations and worsening of symptoms. But in my next episode, I'd like to provide info on some other studies that have shown different results as we continue to try and discern fact from fiction in this crazy COVID world of ours. Thanks for joining me.